Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our very first High Heels Cabaret show. It's the place where magic happens. I am your Merlin, Patricia Leonard, creator and show producer. It's a live event offering the opportunity for performers to showcase their talents and share any messages they may have through the creative arts. High Heels Cabaret has a mission. The mission is focused on education, entertainment, and encouragement. Through the audience, I'd like to say thank you so much for being here. And I'm gonna allow you to do some magic yourself tonight by your applause and maybe occasionally your bravo shouts. So I think it must be about time to start the show. So here we go. Abracadabra, Alakazam. We will create magic by the wave of this wand in my hand. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce our first performer tonight, Sunny Brown. She has a charismatic, bubbly personality that comes shining through for everyone that meets her. She's an entertainer, a comedian, a writer, actress, and a late bloomer. Now get ready for laughing yourself with the comedy of this fantastic bubbly artist, Sunny Brown. Good evening. Good evening. I'm so excited to be here at the High Heels Cabaret Show. Oh, by the way, don't you like my shoes? Thank you. I wasn't sure what shoes to wear tonight. I mean, you know how important of a decision that is. My shoes actually carry a lot of weight. <laughs> and each pair of our shoes gives us a, they, they have something to tell other people about ourselves. But they also have something to say about the way we see ourselves. And each pair of our shoes gives us the opportunity to try on a new personality, to, to try on a new you. And they give you a chance for a, for a reinvention. And have you noticed that shoes have names? Well, I always like the shoes named Cherry <laughs> and Candy and Jenny. I've sworn to never buy myself another pair of shoes named the Plain Jane. <laughs> and um, our shoes also give us the opportunity to, to try on a, a new personality, like I said. And I have been on a journey of self-discovery to find my true identity for the past 30 years. <laughs> I'm what they call a late bloomer. But I've heard it said that it's never too late to become the person you were meant to be. I think it just helps to have the right shoes. <laughs> After all, they say you never really know a person until you've walked in their shoes. <laughs> so I thought that's where I might find myself at DSW. <laughs> I could do a lot of soul searching in there. <laughs> and of course, today, with, with the possibility of shopping online for shoes, this, the, the possibility for self-discovery is endless. <laughs> I used to be afraid to shop online because of identity theft. <laughs> But then I realized I'm a woman over 50. No one wants to be me. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen the headlines, but they all say that once a woman turns 50, she just completely becomes irrelevant and disappears from society. She becomes invisible. And I couldn't understand why a woman becomes invisible once we turn 50 until one night when I was getting ready for bed and I noticed all the products I was using, and they were all vanishing creams. <laughs> and fading lotions <laughs> to minimize, <laughs> visibly reduce, <laughs> fade and erase. 
all of my lines and wrinkles and dark spots and crepey skin and, well, basically everything about me. Which is very, you know, unfortunate and it works too. But I have this eye cream that promises to make all the lines and creases around my eyes completely disappear if I use it twice a day. So every morning and every night, I put some on my fingers and I, I very gently tap it in all around both eyes. Well, my lines are still there, but my fingerprints are gone. <laughs> No wonder we feel invisible. <laughs> and it's very unfortunate because I was just now beginning to get comfortable in my own skin. You know, just now um, getting to know myself, to know the real me, which isn't easy because I am a Gemini. <laughs> I mean, by this age, we're supposed to have ourselves all figured out and, and found ourselves and know where we're going. <laughs> The only trouble is that I have no sense of direction. <laughs> so I depend on my shoes to walk me through this journey of self-discovery. And actually, my shoes have taught me something about myself. I mean, they've taught me the importance of having self-confidence, of facing my fears, of stepping out of my comfort zone. I mean, every pair of shoes I've ever loved have made me uncomfortable. <laughs> at least in the beginning, until I got used to them. <laughs> and facing your fears, I believe facing your fears in life is the only way to truly grow as a person. I mean, our fears can keep us from living our most glamorous life. <laughs> and so, every morning, I put on my highest heels and I force myself to face my fear of heights. <laughs> because I think so many great adventures in life happen when you're high. <laughs> I mean, how else can I be expected to climb the ladder of success and reach the top and shatter the glass ceiling unless I conquer my fear of heights? <laughs> And we all know how uh, much self-confidence it takes to pull off walking into a room wearing your highest heels. <laughs> Actually, it takes a great degree of self-confidence to pull off anything you're wearing. <laughs> but you have to gradually build up to facing your fears. And if you happen to have a fear of heights like moi, you know, that, that, um, that dizziness you get and the wobbly, shaky knees and the, and the, the sweaty palms when you're up there in all that thin air. <laughs> well, I have found that a great place to start is the shoe department. <laughs> I always find lots of inspiration in there for facing my fear of heights. <laughs> I mean, have you seen how high shoes are today? I have a pair of shoes, every time I wear them, I get a nosebleed. <laughs> and they say that our fears can become even more pronounced the older we get. I mean, we can either be paralyzed by fear or we can be motivated by it. And my fear of heights motivates me to do shoe shopping. <laughs> And there's nothing like stepping into a, a beautiful pair of shoes and self-confidently facing your fears. Well, it's our time to glow and our time to show. Our life is just beginning and our fun is never ending. It's our time to glow and our time to show. We're only getting better. We're all in this together, never fear. Stage. With new shoes you can choose, step into a new you now. Reach for new heights and set your own sights. Know that you will go far, show you are a shining star. So put your troubles aside and your worries behind. Step forward and let go and let your sparkle shine. Let your light shine. Let it shine. Now it's our time to wake up and never give up. They say we are invisible, but we're 
irresistible. We're over 50, but feeling sexy, just like Aphrodite in a seat in 90. So put your troubles beside and your worries behind. Step forward and let go and let your sparkle shine. Let your light shine, 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 shine. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Sunny. Thank you so much. That was fabulous. I just want to say to all the men in the audience, I hope you've got a golf game planned tomorrow or something because we're all going to DSW Shoe Store tomorrow. <laughs> yes, our next performer is going to delight you with stories that she has written since she was five years old. Morelia Quavaz is known for professionally as a confident, rowdy rock and roll and she's known as the rhinestone heiress. She is a business and broadcast professional as well as a voiceover artist, event planner, and the best hostess in Nashville. Let's give her a round of applause. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Patricia. The story I'm going to read is The Masked Man. There he stood, all six foot four of him, in center stage, just a few moments before he walked into my life. I was the one in the front row at the theater with my back to the audience. You couldn't miss me. I wore a big red bow in my long brown hair. My big brown eyes were focused straight ahead. He was the first thing that caught my eye. He was tall with extremely long legs, and he had a tan just like George Hamilton's. <laughs> the stage lights shined on his broad shoulders like the bright yellow sun in mid-July. I just couldn't control myself. I continued to sit there with my hands in my lap, holding my legs down from shaking. Where, you could heat, where there were shivers going up and down my spine. It was quiet till my teeth started to begin chattering. And then all of a sudden you heard people yelling, shh, directly to me. I began to blush. My face was turning pinkish red, full of embarrassment. I kept thinking to myself, oh, if I could only meet him, it would be a total dream. He moved with such style, either it was at stage left or stage right. He always captured his audience. When he spoke, his words poured out so evenly with an English accent. What struck me the most was his glowing blue eyes. They were blue, as soft as the sky and as rich as the ocean. His eyes put me in a trance, <laughs> yet he made me feel so safe. But his face wasn't too clear to me, since after all, he did wear a mask. And maybe he was hiding from something, I don't know what. He looked straight into my eyes, like he was watching me. He was a perfect picture. He was untouched and developed for everyone to see. He was definitely gorgeous. I was obsessed with what was underneath that mask. I felt as if Maybe we met before, but I, I realized that just couldn't be true. He had so much passion on stage that I wanted to act on stage with him. I felt like I was one of the characters. His presence was all around me throughout the play. The curtains drop and the lights dim. It was over. The theater began to turn cold, dark, gloomy and empty except for me. I slowly lifted myself from my chair and approached the stage. In my mind, it was all fantasy till my feet sent, touched center stage. Suddenly I felt someone's presence around me. For a minute, all I saw was lights and a full audience applauding. I looked around and saw no one. Then a cold hand reached out and touched me on my shoulder. I jumped. It was the masked man. 
I was puzzled at first, then I began a little scared. He grabbed my hand and pressed his wet lips against it, and he replied, you're beautiful. I thought it was a dream, but I knew I was awake. Then I turned around, and then he disappeared. A year passes on. It was a hot summer day in July. I left to go see a play at the same theater where I was amazed with this masked man. I sat down in my usual front row seat and looked straight to the center stage. I placed myself in a daze and remembered that masked man knowing I might never see him again. Then all of a sudden, someone tapped me on the shoulder. I glanced over and stared into his deep blue eyes. They seemed so familiar to me. He took my hand and said, beautiful, we meet again. <laughs> it's amazing the picture that a story read can really give you, isn't it? It's just, I always say that in every story there are many gifts and lots of glories. Thank you, Moralia, that was fabulous. Our next guest is C4. So C4 is a working performing artist. She's been nominated for the Josie Award and she sings and writes her own music. C4 is a talented performer with a heart for giving back to others on her own successful musical journey. Please welcome C4. Hi everybody, thank you so much. My name is C4 and that's correct. Thank you so much Patricia for the wonderful introduction. I am Cecilia the fourth and my father nicknamed me C4 and so it just stuck and here we are. <laughs> and uh, I do, I really have a heart for giving back uh, to people and um, these two songs are from my modern folk uh, collection um, and from Calling to Connection. And the first one is called Beautiful Jane and the second one will be called Sisters. Something doesn't know what's coming. 
cries for leaving and she dreams a laundress and a crown and she builds that fortress they tear it down and she's running to the sound of her heart beating on the ground and she wakes to Thank you so much. And that's the call. We all need to be called to rise up and rise higher. And, and um, I was blessed to have been saved and called to higher. And if it wasn't for my sisters and, and my brothers and, my, and uh, for my sisters tonight, this, if it wasn't for my sisters to help pull me um, across the bridge and uh, and now for me to be able to stand in the gap for people and help other people cross the bridge. This is a song about that. It's called Sisters. She's got a cutting edge style, wants to sit and talk for a while. Wants to turn the wine back into water. to tell me all her secrets show me some of mine you know i've never seen a blue moon shine quite like her and i've never seen a blue moon shine Shut 
She says that sunshine, that's all the reason that shadow's coming. Don't you worry, it's just the sun shining. That's my sister. Wants to turn the wine back into water And I think I'll let her She's my sister And I think I'll let her She's my sister All right, thank you so much. Thank you, God bless you all. Thank you, Patricia so much for having me tonight and thank you for this beautiful cabaret high heel cabaret i'm so grateful to be here i wore my cowboy boots but you know it's my version of high heels thank you thank you so much Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I have two fabulous performers that you're going to enjoy. They're dynamite. Hal Johnson is here. She is a dancer by trade, and she has Tristan Hicks with her, and they're both from Tennessee, and each have been performing for over 10 years. They look too young for that, don't they? Working on films and commercials and micro series and video games, and they've got all kinds of experience and background. They are creating the scene between an actor and a stage manager preparing for a show reminiscing about the rush that each goes through leading up to a performance. Let's give them a round of applause and a great welcome. This is my home. This is my empire, my Rome. In this world, I am a king. Glory, hallelujah. Do you hear the people sing? In this place, I feel alive. Places in five. Thank you, five. This is what gives me purpose. This is the one place where I don't get nervous. Not nervous, but anxious. In this place, I am not sanctioned. I'm free. I'm free to be or not to be. That is my question, my choice. This is the place where I find my voice. Who could want more? Places in four. Thank you, four. I can accelerate past the norm. So I race toward the oncoming storm, the flood of lights, the thunderous applause, these people on the edge of their seats with each dramatic pause, each perfectly executed line. This is where I belong. This world is mine. Come and see. Places in three. Thank you, three. My friends and I prepare to venture into a world that before tonight existed only on a page. We come here to escape, to become players on a stage. This is our liberation. We become baptized. We step into something new. Places in two. Thank you, too. I stare at the lighted mirror. My world is never more clearer. All my troubles melt away. I'm a character on a stage. I'm not me today. This is something to remember. I found my place. It only took 15 Septembers. Places! Thank you. Please. Oh. I pass the steady faces. We're all ready to work. All I have to do is finish this rhyme. Now, it's, it's showtime. showtime. Fantastic. Thank you so much. You'll see, you'll see more of them because they're only beginning their career, even though they may have been in it for over 10 years, but fabulous, fabulous. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you Holly Heiss, and she is joined by Gilbert, the guitar man. 
She has developed a creative series titled The Scallywag Tales. It's a professional animation and graphic design platform for putting creativity into the hands of children. This series gives children the opportunity to learn, develop, and explore their musical talents through interactive videos and storybook. Holly Heist and Gilbert. Somewhere out beyond the star song, there's a magical place called Harmonia, where music is the DNA of existence and inspiration. It's a beautiful planet overflowing with wonderful music, and the musical instruments are alive. <laughs> The heroes and superstars of Harmonia are a band of lovable animals called the Scallywaggle Tales. Their infectious, fun music attracts kids all over the galaxy to sing, dance, and play. That's important because the Scallywaggle Tales, their ship and the planet of Harmonia, get their power from music. Who will help the children that love music? Will you join the children and help keep the music playing? Wag your tail! Wag your tail! Wag your tail! I sure love that song! Hi! I'm Gilbert. I'm from the planet of Harmonia, where everything is musical. Even our cars run on music power. I get to be the master of ceremonies at all the Scallywaggles puppet shows, and I get to be in them too. The Scallywaggles are a band of animals that travel in outer space performing their music. Music powers their spaceship, Oh, and this is my pal, Holly. She created all of us. I love you, Gilbert. Gilbert is the best MC, and he helps us in our mission to, first of all, nurture creativity through fun and play, and secondly, help children discover and develop their musical talents, and thirdly, foster friendship, connection, and cooperation through music. Yeah, that means we get to make up songs and sing and dance and play musical instruments with you. And I always like to make new friends. Gilbert loves his friends and having fun, and so do I. Hey! That reminds me of a joke. Do you know what kind of music frogs like? Hmm. I think frogs mostly croak loudly at night. Oh, you're trying to croak, <laughs> but you're not very good at it, though you're silly. I like, you know what? Frogs like hip hop. <laughs> oh, funny Gilbert. Hey, what sort of music does a mountain like? Hmm, what music would a mountain like? Mountain music, maybe? No, silly, rock. <laughs> Funny, huh? Here's another one. What music does a Mack truck like? Oh, maybe that bluegrass band that got the Grammy, the Steel Drivers? Ooh, that's pretty good, but a Mack truck really likes heavy metal. <laughs> hey, yeah, Gilbert, you do rocket humor and music. I love you. Yeah, I like all different kinds of music, classical, hip hop, rock, jazz, blues, pop. That's great. Music is a safe place for me to be me, to express my inner soul.
I started singing in my crib when I was a baby. My mom said whenever I couldn't get to sleep, I would sing. And I still do that. It makes me calm. And then I fall asleep. And I put together a band with Natalie Note, Clarence Clarinet, Violet Violin, Buddy Bass, and a bunch of other friends. <laughs> oh, I love that holiday puppet show. And so do the kids, I noticed. Our puppet shows nurture and plant seeds of music and creativity in kids, teens, and adults, too. And they get to experience the scallywaggle stories and activities we have on the iPad and the iPhone. Oh, you, oh, you mean those cool musical stories that, and fun on the iPad? They are the best. Yeah, so good. When we're traveling, I never get bored because it's different. I love to see new places and new faces and hear new music. When do we go? As Holly said earlier, our mission is to nurture creativity through fun and play, help children discover and develop their musical talent, foster friendship, connection, cooperation through music. A lot of big words, but you know what it means. It means we get to sing and dance and make up music. So until next time I see you, sing and play music, dance and create music. Keep the music playing. I love you. Bye-bye. Very good. We have a great performer coming up here, and you're going to be delighted with her music and the message. Shante has sung in church choir since her 12th birthday. She has won competitions for spoken word poetry, classical and gospel solo singing. She is a music missionary and has traveled to over seven countries. Her name means to sing. Shante was born with a God-given gift of serving. Enjoy this uplifting performance by Shante Kirkwood and accompanied by Charlie and Marcelina Robinson. The first song that we're going to do is The Goodness of God by C.C. Winan. The second song is uh, Is There Anybody Here? And this is our family. This is how we sit around and we just sing and play games and talk to one another and eat good food. So y'all yeah. come on into the kitchen with us. <laughs> I love you, Lord. For your mercy never failed me In all my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God Cause all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able oh I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I know you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. Cause all my
with every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. When my life lay down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. It's running after me When my life lay down I surrender now I give you everything Your goodness is running after It's running after me Your goodness is running after It's running after me Your goodness is running after is running out to me. Oh, wow. <laughs> Amen. Well, is there anybody here who loves my Jesus? Or anybody here yeah. who loves the Lord? I want to know if you love my Jesus. Mm -hmm. I want to know if you really, really love Good, thank you so much. That was fabulous. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Linda Evgen. She's a seen, seasoned actress. Over 60 years, she tells me. That's hard to believe. Credits include classics like Two Mules for Sister Sarah and Rio Bravo. Linda will express her storytelling talents with a performance from Shakespeare. Linda Evgen. Thank you. This 
is a scene from Taming of the Shrew with the older sister. And uh, the older sister is about 40, and I'm 75. So we're going to do this and get through it. <laughs> fie, fie. Oh, unknit that threatening brow, and do not, do not scornful glances with those eyes. To wound thy lord, thy king, thy governor, is to blot thy beauty as frost does bite the meads. Confound thy, thy fame, too, and, and uh, do not uh, fame with whirlwinds Shake fair buds, and no sense is it meet or amiable. A woman moved is like a fountain troubled, muddy, ill-seeming, and not bereft of beauty while it is so that none so dry and thirsty would even deign to sip or touch a drop of it. Thy husband is thy lord, thy keeper, thy life. He's the head, he's the sovereign, he cares for you. And in the maintenance of this, he commits his body to painful labor by sea and by land. Ah, oh, the nights in storms and the day in cold, while thou liest warm at home and safe and secure with no other craving than a tribute to love and fair looks and total obedience. Uh, it's really not enough to pay for such a great debt. And so the servants and the subjects also owe the prince, and even women oweth their husbands. They, they crave no other duty, and when they are fraud, peevish, sour, and sullen, what are they when they don't obedient to his will, his honest will? What is she? but some foul contending rebel and graceless traitor to her loving Lord. And, and I am ashamed that women are so simple that they would offer war when they should kneel for peace or rule supremacy and sway when they are bound to serve, love, and obey. Ah, oh, why are our bodies so soft and weak and smooth? Oh, it's, it's unable to toil or trouble in the world. But, come, come. There is that soft conditions in our hearts that will, should agree with our external parts. Now come, come all of you unforward and unable worms. My mind has built one for you. And there, no stimulus 
that can do what you can do and veil your stomachs, it's no boot, and put your hand under your husband's foot to honor his duty, if he please. My hand is ready. I hope it gives him ease. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have come to the final act of our first cabaret show, and we've got a great guest. Her music fuses blues and jazz. After touring as a member of an opening act for Hall and Oates and the Doobie Brothers, Pam conquered the blues and cabaret scene in New York City, resulting in a MAC Mac nomination for Best Debut Artist. Pam Tate will have you remembering and getting lost in the music of the greats like Ella Fitzgerald, Billie Holiday, Nora Jones, and Etta James. I introduce to you Pam Tate. Thank you, Patricia. Hello, good evening. Thank you for being here, and thank you, Patricia, for inviting me. This is exciting. Okay, I'm going to start off with a song that I, I know you just heard was written yesterday, but it was performed for the first time in 1926 on Broadway, and uh, we'll just take it from there when I get my cue. And I think you'll recognize it. They heard the breeze in the trees singing weird melodies. And they named that the start of the blues. And from a jail came a wail of a downhearted frail. And they played that as part of the blues. From a whippoorwill high on a hill, they took a new That the Southland gave birth to the blues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From a whip and wheel high on a hill, they took a new. Well, this is super fun for me because, as Patricia said, I've done a lot of cabaret in my world, and, uh, and I have not done some lately, so I've really enjoyed being invited tonight and uh, excited to share these songs with you.
We're going to end with this one, and it's called Your Secret Safe. My lips are sealed. I wouldn't kiss and tell. Don't want to tell the world. Don't want to break the spell. And you can love me all you want. Your secret's safe with me. Don't want no introduction to friends and family. Just want a wild seduction, a little mystery. And you can love me all you want. Your secret's safe with me. And our love won't see the light of day. Well, that's fine with me. I kind of like it that way. Cause there's nothing more exciting than a secret shared by two. Your secret is safe with me. If my secret is safe with you, we'll find a darkened corner where I'll keep you to myself. We'll hide from all informers, don't want to share the wealth. You can love me all you want, your secret's safe with me. Your secret is safe with me If my secret is safe with you I'll wear my dark glasses and a hat To hide my face And when you run into an old acquaintance I'll vanish without a trace You can love me all you want Your secret's safe with me You can love me all you want your secret's safe with me. You can love me all you want. Thank you, thank you so much.